Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to today's webinar on contractor certification. My name is Jessica and I'll be going through the webinar with you today. It's so great to see so many of you on here this morning and I just want to say I really hope everybody is keeping well during these difficult and uncertain times. Excellent guys, so before I get started, I just want to go through a quick webinar agenda with you, just so that you can kind of understand the path that this webinar will be taking. So I'm going to first of all give you an introduction to the contractor certification. After that, we're going to be track, um, showing you how you can track contractor certification on your dashboard. I'll be then showing you how you can manage and create a contractor certification on your fixed flow site. I will also be briefly explaining contractor services and certification as well. I'll be showing you how you can add certification to your contractor profiles on the agent side of the system, as well as how this will pull through to the contractor side and how they can add certification as well. Just to let you know, I will show you as well what pulls through when you are instructing works to contractors. And finally, how you can set up user permissions for contractor certification as well. Guys, at the end of the webinar, there will be a live Q&A. And I just want to let you know that I am, in fact, recording today's webinar and I will be sending out a recording by the end of play today so that you do have a recording to rewatch at any time. With regards to the Q&A, this is obviously your time and I want you to feel as though you can ask questions as well. So if you do have any questions at all, please do feel free to get them through. There should be a Q&A button on your Zoom bar, so please do click on that and you will be able to ask any questions which will be answered at the end of the webinar. What I'm going to do now is get started on the actual webinar. So first of all, I want to give you a quick introduction to contractor certification. So guys, on Fixed Flow, you are able to, in fact, manage all of your contractor compliance. So you can actually see from a bird's eye point of view how compliant your um, contractors are in terms of whether or not their certificates are up to date on your Fixed Flow system. It is a fantastic tool and we're going to go through some of the features of it now because it allows you to, for example, set permissions so that, for example, actually you can't instruct works to contractors unless their certification is valid. And also you can just obviously keep up to date with whether or not your certificates have got this valid certification set up or not. So that's just a very quick introduction just to let you know this is a feature that's available obviously on Fixed Flow, and I'm now going to show you essentially how you can use this. Excellent guys. So here I am on my dashboard, which is the first thing I see when I log in to the fixed flow system. You should be relatively familiar with this, but just to let you know, if you're not sure of the dashboard or you don't fully know how to use it, we do have a few options for you. On help.fixflow.com, we do have a video library and on there, there's either a bite size video of the dashboard, which is about 10 minutes long. And I also did a featured webinar on the dashboard, which is about a half an hour long, which is also available to be found on our fixed flow video library. So if you're a bit confused on the dashboard or you're not quite using it right, I'd highly recommend that you do watch either one of those. The featured webinar is obviously a bit longer. It's got a little bit more detail on it. And if you do feel like you need those recordings because you're not sure quite where to go, please do let me know and um, I'll be happy to send that out to you. The email address, guys, is support at fixflow.com. I'd be so happy to send it to those that aren't sure, but just to let you know, the dashboard that I'm looking at now is the default dashboard on Fixflow. And this is what's given to all new members of staff and can also easily be um, put on your dashboard if you would like it. You can in fact track contractor certification on your dashboard. The dashboard is made up guys of 12 panels. And the default dashboard, as you can see, has eight. So there are four panels available for me. To add a new panel, all I would need to do is hover over a free panel. And I could click anywhere to add a new panel within that particular panel. This will take me through to this little pop up saying select a panel. And guys, just to let you know, you can search for all panels on this bar here. 
but we've also segmented panels for you here on the left hand side and if you in fact click on contractors the only panel available for contractors is in fact to do with uh, certification compliance so you can select that panel contractor certification compliance and click add selected and this will then allow you on your dashboard to track all contractors who have certification which is either soon to expire or in fact expired you can see here we've got the name of the contractors and then we've got these little symbols here on the right hand side Amber stands for soon to expire. So Joey's boiler has at least one certificate, which is soon to expire. But that is still technically valid, but it's just kind of bringing that to your attention. And then we have JSI, which has in fact got a expired certification as it's a red square. So that is one way you can manage your contractor certification on your dashboard, which is something that you might want to do if you are using contractor certification, if you have a free dashboard panel. Contractor certification is managed here within people. So if I click on people, you will notice that a drop down appears. And essentially, you can manage this and view it on a contractor basis by clicking on contractors. And you can also click here on contractor certification, which is where you can manage your contractor services. You can manage the actual certificates you have set up, as well as add new ones. Before I delve into this, I'm just going to go here onto your contractors or my contractors even. And if I click here on contractors, you will see it takes me through to a list of my contractors. Here I can see all of my contractors in a list and on the right hand side of each contractor there are some symbols so if we start with Reggie's roofing who is at the top I can see there is a green bubble next to his name and if I hover over that this shows me that his certification is in fact up to date if he has more than one certificate because this is a green bubble all of them will be up to date We've got Joey's boilers who pulled through on that dashboard panel and you can see that he has got an amber bubble and that shows that one or more certificates are in fact soon to expire. So it's just bringing that to my attention. And here with JSI, this also pulled through to the contractor um, tracker for the panel on the dashboard. We can see that this is in fact a red square here. That shows, as you can see when I hover over it, that one or more of the certificates is in fact invalid. As you probably noticed, guys, this does work on a traffic light system, working from green through to amber through to red. Green meaning compliant and um, valid. Amber meaning soon to expire and red, in fact, meaning expired. Guys, as well as using colours, we've also used uh, shapes here as well. So just to let you know. A circle means uh, still compliant and a square means expired. This will help anyone who has any visual difficulties, such as perhaps color blindness as well. So that is in place as well. Excellent, guys. I'm going to go into this in some more detail later, but I just wanted to go through contractor certification with you here, which is still under people, but it's just at the bottom. So if I click into contractor certification, this will bring up all of my contractors that have certification currently on fixed flow. Anyone without it will not appear on this list. And just to show you, you can search here by, con uh, by certification type using this drop down. You can actually search for particular contractors. Obviously, if you are using contractor certification a lot, you'll probably have many more than three. So you may want to search for someone. And you've also here got compliance status as well. So you may, for example, want to view all of the contractors who are about to expire with their certificates and press search, and then only those who have got this amber bubble here will appear. Guys, contractor certification can be managed, added, and uh, services can also be resolved or um, organized within this page here. There is this little options button at the top of the page. And if I click on options, you will see there are three little drop down options here. So here we've got add new contractor certificate. So this is where you can add new certification that's not currently on your fixed flow system. You can manage your certificates here as well. And finally, guys, here we have got certificate services as well. 
The first one I'm going to go into is in fact this middle one called Manage Certificates, as this will show me now a list of all the certificates that I have got set up on my fixed flow system. By default, this will show everything, including anything you've archived, but you can click this off to just show your active uh, certificates. And you can see here the list. By default, um, I believe this list will have these top three here and then these bottom two. I have in fact added GDPR and also um, general contractor certification as well. If you show archived, which will be set by default, you can easily um, reactivate that by clicking here on this little refresh symbol. And certification can also be deactivated by clicking here on this little trash can. You can add new certifications here if you wish to, and you can in fact manage the certifications here as well. So for example, the ones we've already set up for you, if I go into gas safety registration, I can click into that where I can change the certification name if I wish. I can also put in a default expiry. If this is not set up, you will then need to put in the expiry um, date when a um, start date is added. But if, for example, you say that this, for example, would expire after a year, when somebody adds a certificate and they put in the start date, the end date will automatically add based on the expiry date which is given to that certificate. So this is easily done by clicking here and choosing, for example, one year if you wanted to. And also you can add a template for this. Templates are actually taken from setup and document library. And to add these certificates, uh, sorry, these templates, you will need to have administration permissions in order to access this setup section here which then obviously takes you through to the document library here. Perfect. So I just wanted to show you how that would look. And if I go back into contractor certification now, you can add new certificates in two ways. The first way would be through if we click on options and manage certificates, there is a little add new button here. So this is obviously a good way to start maybe because then you can view the certificates you have and think actually something's missing, I need to add it here. Or alternatively, from contractor certification down here again, you can click on options and you can add a new contractor certificate straight from the go here. In this case, I'm going to click here and so we can add a new certificate. The only thing you actually need in order to add a new certificate is in fact the certificate name. So for example, I'm going to add a plumbing one called Master Plumber. And if I wanted to, I could add the certification, certificate duration and a template if I had one set up, again, from setup and document library. Once happy, I can click save. And then if I now go to options and click on manage certificates, you will see that Master Plumber has in fact added here. And again, if I wanted to remove that at any point, I easily could do by clicking on archive this certificate type here on the right hand side. Guys, the final thing I want to show you here within the contractor certification is how you can actually manage contractor services. So when I click into a contractor, you can tick certain services that they actually do. And what you can do is you can click here on options and uh, certificate services, and you can say that if a contractor has a, a certain service ticked, they will in fact then need to provide certification. So for example here, I'm going to scroll down. These are all in alphabetical order, so you can easily find them. And I'm going to go to gas safety. So if any of my contractors have got gas safety ticked as one of the services that they do, I would like um, the gas safety registration to be something that they need to in fact add. So if I click that and then press save, you can now see that under gas safety, the gas safety registration certificate is in fact needed. What this means is that when I scroll up and I go to people and contractors here, before we had three contractors with certification set up and now you'll notice we have four, two of which have red squares and one of them is Wiggins Gas. 
The reason being is because I've just ticked that for gas services, they will need to have gas sa a gas safety uh, certificate set up. And if I click into this contractor here, and I scroll down and click on services, I can see that he has got the gas safety service ticked already. So I've with that contractor, in order for this to work, you need to make sure that you've actually ticked the relevant services per contractors. If none of those are ticked, then obviously if you go to contractor certification and start adding um, certain certificates for certain services, nothing will actually pull through. So the two obviously do work hand in hand here. So this contractor, it does say here that he's gas, that he does um, gas safety works. So in that case, his certification does require gas safety. So it pulled straight through. Guys, just to let you know, you can add certificates to your contractor profiles um, on the agent side. And just to let you know, when they do have expired certification, like this guy here now, Wiggum's Gas, every single email that then goes out to him, it will in fact ask him for, his, for him to update his certificate. This is easily done on the contractor side, and I'll show you how to do that later. But just to let you know, now that that has literally just populated on his system, he will not receive an email now. It will only go for kind of chaser emails that go out to him and any issues where you say, um, please, can you resolve this issue? So any emails that go out going forward, but there is no, not one that automatically will go out to him now. What I can do as an agent now is click here on the certification tab where I can see that the contractor, uh, the certification compliance again here is invalid and I can see that there is one required. If I want to, I can go and tick additional ones, which would then, for example, if I press save, add more certificates. But for now, I'm quite happy with the gas registrations, um, safety registration. It's not ticked here because it's pulled through from the actual service instead. As an agent, I can now click here on add new document, where it will take me through to add a certificate. So as I mentioned before, this can either be done on the agent side or on the contractor side. And remember that contractors are going to get those auto notifications asking them for a certificate. I can, in fact, show you an example of what that might look like. So, for example, this is one of the chaser emails that Mr. Wiggums gets. This is one that came through um, this morning because I believe that I had um, set this up. But you can see here it says, uh, oh, sorry, bear with me one second. That's not actually the one. Sorry, one moment. I do apologize. Um, here we go. Sorry, it was on another one altogether because Wiggums wasn't set up, was he? I've got here, dear J JSI. Now remember, he obviously had a red certificate this morning, which means it's um, expired. This is just him, so showing him a summary of his outstanding actions. And you can see one, he's got an invitation to quote. He's also got jobs awaiting start date. And it also lets him know here that in fact, his compliance certificates need to be updated. So this is what one thing he would receive, for example, every single day. And it would remind him that he does need to sort his certificates out here. So just showing you that's the email that will go out. Perfect. So back to the agent side. So if I am here adding a document, I would simply click here on choose file. Where I would then be able to, for example, um, add a, um, for example, guest safety. That will then add for me. Uh, you can see here, because there was no expiry set up automatically for gas safety registrations, um, as the agent now, I would need to say, if this starts today, this might then finish next year. So I'd go in and go to 2021, go to July and say that actually this will um, expire on the 15th. The reminder. Now, the reminder is all to do with when the certificate goes from green 
through to Amber. So a month before the 15th of July, 2021, I'm going to want the certificate color to go from green to amber. Just reminding me that actually that's coming to an end soon and I will need to click validate, valid to validate this. Once I've pressed save, we can see this is successful and we can click back and we can see that in fact, the certification compliance guide is now green. If I go back now to my contractors, we can see that in fact, Wiggums is now green, his certificates are up to date, so that's all good. Just to show you, this does pull through when you are in fact instructing works to contractors. So if I go back to my dashboard and I go into a particular issue, and I want to instruct these works to a contractor, I would choose the works flow instruct works, And when I go to select a contractor on this contractor selection pop-up, you will see all of the co your contractors here. And in fact, it will show you um, whether or not their certification is valid and up to date. If I go to instruct the works to somebody with a, certif a um, expired certificate, this little pop-up warning will appear. If I'm happy, I can click confirm and I can can proceed to the next step where I could essentially award the job to them. But I just want to show you this does pull through when you're either instructing works to a contractor or if you are, um, if you're instructing works to a contractor, sorry, or if you are um, uh, requesting quotes as well. So that will appear. Guys, what I want to do now is show you how you can upload certificates on the contractor side of things. So if I go to uh, people here and I go to contractors, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click here on Handyman Hank. And I'm going to go to certification. And just to show you, I may say, for example, with this guy, I also want a gas safety registration and press save. What I'm now going to do, guys, is I'm going to log in as the handyman here and show you how that will look. So bear with me just one moment. I'm just going to log in as him and show you how he can, in fact, um, upload a certification. So here I... Oh. Sorry, bear with me one moment. What I'll do is I'll add one for Reggie. I do apologize for this. So if I go to contractors and I go to my favorite contractor here and add that actually I want him to have electrical safety registration and press save, I'm now going to log in as Reggie and I will show you how he can add his certification on his side. Okay, perfect. So here I am now logged in as Reggie, where he can in fact click, um, so we can see certificates are due actually here and it will notify him with this little kind of one in a red um, circle. And he can, so he can either go through here or he can click here on contractor and go to my profile. When he clicks on my profile, there is a certification tab here, which he can click on and he can see that this one is valid and up to date. However, this one actually needs to be added. With this example, I'm going to click here on add new document where it looks very similar to what you guys had, where he can choose a file and he can add, for example, a document. He can put the expiry date because, again, with the gas safety, we haven't put an expiry date. So that might be something that you, in fact, do want to add. It does make things quicker. And press save. Now, guys, once that is done, I just want to show you what actually happens here now on the agent side of things, because you will now need to validate this. When I log in here as the agent, I just want to point out to you that this doesn't actually show here on the um, tracker. This only shows you certificates which are soon to expire and have in fact expired. 
But you can click here on people. You can go to the contractors. Well, I can see now that Reggie actually does have here a little kind of timer, which means that these, he has one or more certificates which in fact need validating. I have put it forward to the developers that it would be helpful to include this on the dashboard tracker as this is something you now need to action. If I click here on Reggie's roofing and go to certification, as an agent now, you will need to go into the one with this little timer here. And you will, in fact, need to click into this, check it's the correct thing, and then you will need to click valid here. If you do not do that, it will stay with this little, um, with that little timer icon, and it will not turn green until you have clicked valid. You will also here need to add a quick summary. So for example, here, I'll just put, this isn't actually gas, is it? It's a lick. Cool. For example, and then press save. And then that will um, be validated. So if I go back to Reggie now, I can see that that's in fact gone green. And if I go to contractors, his, the little timer has disappeared and he is back to green. So if you add it yourself, you'll validate it at the time. So there's no kind of little timer. But if the contractor uploads the certificate, you must make sure that you do click validate in order for that then to turn green. And as I mentioned before, unfortunately, it doesn't pull through on the dashboard panel. So it's not unfortunately trackable there. You can only track those that have expired or are soon to expire through there. Guys, I just want to now go through with you um, how you can set user role permissions. You can set user role permissions so that certain agents can or can't deal with contractor certification. And you can also set user permissions so that you can't, in fact, instruct works to a contractor who has got expired certification. So if I click here on people, you have got your user roles here. Now, guys, your user roles pull through to your agents. So if I click here on user roles, by default, there should be three user roles on your system. These are your administrators and they have got full permissions so they can see absolutely everything on your system. You also have agents and managers. And with your agents and managers, you can in fact limit their permissions. You can add additional roles as well. And then when you add agents, you will give them a user role which must be given before you can add a new agent. That means that you know exactly what permissions that agent has. So if I click here on agents, you'll be able to see that this, that George, for example, who I'm logged in as now, is in fact an administrator. Adam here is an agent. And Jane, for example, here is a manager. This means that George, Adam and Jane will all be able to do different things within the system. George being able to do the most things. If I want to see exactly what it is that Adam and Jane can do, I can click here into user roles and I'll be able to, for example, click onto agents to see what user roles have been set up for Adam, who's an agent, and the same with, for example, Jane by clicking on managers. So just to show you, um, if you would like people to be able to manage contractor compliance, you will need to have ticked that they can edit contractors here. So that's clickable here. And then you can switch this on and off if you want them to be able to manage the actual compliance. When I talk about managing compliance, it's adding certifications for them and also being able to validate their certificates as well. Just to let you know, currently only administrators can in fact delete um, certificates even if you say that managers and agents can manage their compliance, unfortunately they cannot delete it at the moment, but we are looking into that. You also here have um, the option to tick whether or not they can instruct works to contractors with expired certification. For example, Jane, who is a manager, although she can manage contractor um, compliance, she cannot in fact instruct works to contractors with expired certification. So you have the option to turn that on or off. And if you want to be really strict, obviously, you will leave this unticked. If ever you have a member of staff come to you and say, I can't instruct the works to them, but I, I need to, you can, if you want to, obviously go in and either change their actual user role within the agent or just change the permission here within user roles. 
Guys, that's pretty much covered all of contractor certification. I do apologize for not being able to log in as one of the contractors. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, however, I do hope that this has been helpful and given you a very good overview as to how you can manage your contractor compliance within FixedFlow. It is a really good feature, which I think people um, can use more than they are. Um, and it just allows you to obviously keep an eye on these things. No questions have come through, but I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, I'd like to add the second poll, bear with me one second. Um, gosh, I don't, oh, here we go. I'm going to launch the second poll now because it would just be good. There's just two questions on here. It would be good to know, find out how helpful you did find this webinar. Um, Oh, sorry, there are three questions and whether you'd like to see more of these featured webinars in the future. All our featured webinars are available on help.fixflow.com in our video library. And we do have things on um, promotion, the dashboard, planned maintenance, uh, co-pilot. So if you feel like you've missed any of them, please go onto our Fixflow video library. I'll in fact show you where you can go. So if you go to help.fixflow.com, sorry, if you go to help.fixflow.com here, uh, this is our hub of where you can find lots of different articles and contents and videos in order to help you with any Fixflow question you have. Our video library is at the top right hand corner here. And if you click onto that, you can find all of our kind of um, videos which are kind of the smaller more bite-sized videos here on the left and you can also find our webinar videos here as well but I'm also happy to link them out to you so please get in touch if anything is missing it is in fact help.fixflow.com somebody's just asked a question as well so I'm going to answer their question so sorry if I have missed this but can you remove contractors you no longer who no longer use that you no longer use who have expired certifications. Okay, so yes, you can archive contractors. That is no problem at all. Contractors can be archived by clicking here on people. You can click on contractors here and whether they have certification or not, all you would need to do is click into the contractor where you can scroll down and it says here is archived. You would switch that from no to yes and press save. And then that property, that um, contractor, sorry, will be archived. So they will be gone. Just to show you when you are searching for contractors and you click on people and contractors, this will search for your contractors and it does say clearly here, is the account locked? This will search for your active and recently archived contractors. The co contractor I've just locked out has a little lock symbol here and he will drop off after about three days. And you could also search for your archived contractors only and press search where you can find all of your archived contractors. So yes, you can in fact lock them out. Excellent guys. I really hope that you found today's webinar helpful. Thank you for all of your feedback. There's also a link out to feedback if you'd like to give any more feedback. It's always great to hear from you. We are trying to make improvements constantly on the system, make improvements to training and make sure that you guys feel fully supported in understanding all of the features that we have available on Fixflow. Again, feel free to check out our video library where we do have all of the um, webinars available for you to check out. And if you do need any help, just get in touch. No further questions have come in. So I think what I'll do is end the webinar in just a moment, but I'll stay online just for a few more minutes in case anyone has any more questions. So somebody's just asked a question saying, can you prioritize a workman over others who offer the same services? So something you can do within your contractors here is you can in fact make contractors favorites. They can either be agent favorites or landlord favorites. So thank you for your question. Say for example, Reggie Roofing is my absolute favorite contractor. I can click here on this little symbol. You can see that this is the currently just an outline. If I click on it, it will um, 
it will turn gray like that, meaning that this is now a favorite of my contractors. So when I'm requesting a contractor to be instructed, he will actually appear right at the top now. This can also be done on a per landlord basis by clicking here on landlords under people, clicking into a landlord here, where you can in fact choose favorite contractors. So for example, with this one, I'm gonna choose handyman Hank and press add. That again will then uh, pull to the top and I can remove that if I want. So that means when instructing a contractor, they will just appear straight at the top. And someone said, thank you. So you're very, very welcome. Somebody's asked another question. Can you put a contractor on a landlord's profile that they don't want to use for their property? So if you've got a, is, so sorry, uh, Karen, is the question that um, a landlord does not want to use a certain contractor and you want to make sure that they're aware of that? Yes, okay, perfect. So something you can do on fixed flow is you can in fact add notes. Notes can be added for properties, for contractors, for landlords, and also for occupiers. So for example, if I have a landlord that doesn't want to use a certain property, uh, contractor, which is your question, I would click here on landlords, where I can click into a landlord. And if I scroll down, there is a notes section here. What would this would mean is that if I add a note, for example here, Look, just as an example, and press save. Any issue that now comes in for which is under which is a, a property which is managed or which sorry, let me start again. Any new issue that comes in for a property which is related to Alice, so for these two properties, what that means then is that this note will pull into the next steps tab of that issue. I can click on that note and view it. And I always recommend before you go through a next step and start um, progressing the issue, always, always check notes. Just to show you, if I go into my dashboard and I, for example, click here and go into a, an issue here. Bear with me one second. Hmm. Sorry, let me try and find one which will definitely have. Here we go. So if I click into an issue here, the notes sit here on the right hand side, uh, sorry, the left hand side of the screen. And I can see, for example, these landlord notes and I can click into that and actually view the whole note. Always, always make sure you're taking notes and you're reading notes before you go and progress with an issue as it may change the way a maintenance issue is dealt with. If you then go to instruct the works with that con and that landlord's attached to this issue, that contractor will still appear. So you can't remove contractors from a search to do with that landlord, but you can always have the notes and please make sure you're reading those notes first. You're very welcome. Excellent guys. Um, I'll stay online a few more minutes as questions are coming through. It's really great to hear from you. So please keep do keep coming, coming through. If you're leaving us now, Please stay safe. Thank you for attending. And I will be getting everything out to you by the end of play today. Have a wonderful rest of the day and the weekend is soon approaching. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.